man, I didn't think this was going to happen. <laughs> you try to give me a picture of my life. This is the last thing I would have said would have happened. Y'all clap for me. Can we just clap for Jesus real quick? I came to cast a fire on earth. And I wish it was already burning. That's Luke 12, 49. This fire is not a wrath. It's a refining fire. If y'all are note takers, or you got your phone out, I just need you to put it down because God is getting ready to ingrain something in your heart. You don't need to write this on a paper. You don't need to type this in a phone. I just pray that God opens your mind, opens your heart, lifts the veils over your eyes and opens your ears and allows you to receive this. Jesus met me in the pit. A black pit, three stories high. I had a cloak over me. I was 26 grams deep on a mushroom trip. Something that should have sent me into an insane asylum. If you know anything about mushrooms, they play with the brain, the connectivity and different things that goes on. A normal dosage that will send somebody spiraling is about three and a half. I was 26. I was sitting at the top of this amphitheater with a cloak over my head. I felt so unworthy because of everything that I've done. Everybody I've taken advantage of. The person I was. And I saw all these souls just sitting there with me. Ashamed, broken, hurt. Maybe like a lot of you guys in here right now are. And then I saw a light come through at the bottom. And as this light started making its way through, it grew and it grew and it grew. And it turned into a person. And I realized it was Jesus. And I had a voice in my head that said, you need to go. You need to go. But then the devil came inside and said, no, you ain't worthy. He don't want you. Put the cloak over my head and he looked dead at me three stories high. Pushed everybody to the side and came right to me. Jesus met me where I was at. He picked me up and he held me. He said, I'm here, my son. And I cried and I cried and I wept and he pulled me back and he held me by my shoulders. He says, I have something to show you what your life is supposed to be like. And all of a sudden I was taken into a vision of um, these kids, starving kids, ribs exposed, skin tight, malnourished, crying, defeated. And I saw flower beds over hills just pop up and endless amounts of fruit and vegetation just popped up. And the kids and the people ran and they started eating. And whenever they took something out, it just popped back up more. Endless, endless amounts of food over the hills, over the hills. And the people ate continuously. And God spoke to me and he said, you are meant to feed millions of people. You are meant to protect thousands of people. And at that point, I was a farmer. I grew weed at that point. I grew mushrooms too. So I was thinking, okay, he's want me. He's want me to do food, you know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna switch it over. I'm not gonna grow cannabis anymore. I'm gonna grow food. <laughs> Man's not meant to live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. If 
If I could have my family just stand up and see the work that God has been doing. Y'all are scattered around. Can y'all just stand up and give God his glory real quick? God ain't playing. He'll get you. I love each and every one of y'all, especially you. Because you are the only person that has been a tangible aspect to God in my life. You showed me love when I didn't deserve love. You focused on my development rather than my destruction. And you focused on my potential rather than my persecution. And I thank you for that. So my first walk through with God, I said, I don't, I don't. And this might hurt some bones, but this is just pure honesty. This is what I said to God. I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christians. Your Christ came and met me, but your Christians cast me out. Your Christians told me I wasn't supposed to be in this church because of how I was dressed. Your Christians told me I wasn't meant to be loved because how I talk. So what do I do, God? I don't want to turn people away from you. If this is real. I don't want to turn people away. He said, it's simple. I want three things out of you. That's it. Three things. I said, I could do that. That's easy to remember. That's easy. <laughs> God goes, I want you to accept my son and the free gift that he gave you so generously. Accept Jesus Christ into your life because he is the bridge back to your home. God showed me the picture of the end of the world and he showed me the kingdom. The cross fell. There's a way back. Rule number two. Develop an intimate relationship with the father. All your father wants is to talk to you. And I hurt for that for so long because I didn't have a dad. My dad hated me. He despised me. I came out the womb with so many problems. He told my mom, I don't want it. But my father wants me. Through your intimate relationship with the father, he will give you your prescription for what you need in your season. Yes, these 10 commandments are important, but the most important thing is that you have an intimate relationship with the father because the father knows what you need right now. Not what you need in a month, not what you need in two months, not what you need in a year, not what you need in five years, 20 years. It doesn't matter. He's worried about right now. What is Matthew five, Matthew six, excuse me. I'm still learning. Amen. Piece by piece, this puzzle's going to get put together. What does Matthew six say? Tomorrow's got enough worries for itself. Worry about today. Focus on right now. Be present in his presence and allow his presence to be in your present. Last thing. Number three. Look through a lens of love. It'll change everything. A lot of y'all get so caught up on the 10 rules, you forget that Jesus summed it up in two. Come on now. I walk around loving God. I'm not going to want to disrespect God. I'm not going to not want to honor his holy day. I'm not going to want to say his name in vain. I walk around loving my neighbor. I'm not going to look at my woman in a lustful way. My beautiful queen, I thank you. Favor on my life because of you, because of God. God shines down on you every day.
I'm not going to be jealous because my brother is receiving visions in his season and I'm not. I'm not going to be boastful because I realize where I come from and none of this is from me. I'm not going to want to hurt anybody because I realize one, they're my brother or my sister and two, they come from my father. So if I hurt them, I'm hurting my father. God, I feel like preaching today. <laughs> Holy Spirit speak. I got to speed this up. My Tuesday this week was absolutely wild. I went to the gym about two weeks ago with my beautiful queen. And we got delayed about 45 minutes to an hour to our normal time. Just stupid, petty little things getting in the way here and there. But I didn't realize God was getting ready to work. I pull up to the gym and this young man that, you know, I never talked to him or anything like that. He's not a believer. He's not any of that. But he's rolling in, literally rolling in on a knee cart because, you know, he, he fractured his heel. Is rolling in the same time. I'm walking behind him and, and God spit something in my ear. He goes, I want to bless him. I said, oh, okay, that's easy. God bless you, bro. <laughs> God goes, no, 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 no. I, I want to I wanna bless him. I'm like, no, bro, we're not doing this today. I'm not pushing this on nobody. So I'm going to the bathroom. I'm getting ready to do my business. And God speaks to me again. He goes, you got to stop being afraid to bless people boldly. I said, okay, let's see how this goes. <laughs> so I walk out and I see him again. And God goes, I want you to pray for him. I was like, oh, whoa, that's too much. We're not pushing this too much. So I go back to the bathroom. God goes... I'm telling you, stop it. And I said, okay, because now I'm in a negotiating phase with the father. I said, if he looks me dead in the eye, if I walk out, he don't got to, no, I'm not talking about a glance, dad. I'm talking about looks me in the eye. I want to know this is from you. If he looks me dead in the eye, I will pray for him. So I walk out of the gym. We're doing a thing called a, a superset. You got to exercise over here and an exercise over there. I go to my first one. He's not there. I'm like, ha ha. I was like, I told you it wasn't from you, God. I told you. I got to go walk to my second exercise. He's right there. And I walk up behind him. Sure enough, turns around, looks me in the soul. I hear a voice in my head that says, I need you. God says, pray for him. I go up to him and I say, bro, if I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I hope this doesn't sound weird. I don't normally do this. But if you want me to pray over what you got going on, I would love to do that for you. He goes, oh, bro, it's, it's good. You know, it is what it is. You know, a couple of weeks, I should be all right. I don't even know what came over me. The first thing that came out of my mouth was, if you want to be okay right now, let me know. Mm -hmm. God is bold. So I walk over, uh, me and my lady get ready to do another exercise. About five minutes later, he walks up to me and he goes, I don't know what's going on, but I need whatever you got. I said, bet, let's do it. We got to go to the bathroom though, because in scripture says we got to be in private because we ain't supposed to do this stuff for attention, right? He looked at me, okay, bathroom, let's do this, whatever you say. To go in the bathroom and I have him, I was like, take off your shoe. He's like, oh, he's really getting intimate. I start praying over him and the Holy Spirit comes down. I open my eyes. And I see it in his eyes. He's weeping. He says, nobody's ever said anything like that to me before. Nobody's ever cared this much. Thank you. I said, don't thank me. Thank your father. Do me a favor. Stand up. Stood up. Full weight on the hill. Mm -hmm. I 
have more family here that I just got to share that. We prayed over them that same day. The wife wasn't at the gym. The husband was. I still remember the prayer. Father, let me be that Roman officer that has the faith in you that says she doesn't even need to be here. All you need to do is say the word and it'll be healed. Two bulging discs gone. That's a fraction of what I've been gifted to experience this week. It's all a gift from God. It's nothing from me. I've done nothing special but make myself available. And that is not anything that you guys can't do either. I don't know if you feel it in here right now, but the Holy Spirit is just all over. And I'll tell one last story because I got to wrap it up. I was speaking to my brother about four months ago. And at that time, he was the, the Satan was having his way on his family. There was a division, hard. He'd call me multiple times a day, crying, crying, crying. And I just couldn't get anything to come through him because it's not by my power or my volition. I don't have the wisdom to speak to another brother. I don't know what he needs. So I bowed my head in a moment as he's crying and just going off on the phone. My woman was with me. It's the first time she ever saw anything happen. Bless her heart. She's been thrown into acceleration. And as my brother is speaking to me over the phone, I bow my head and I said, Father, just help me say what I need to say. Give the words that need to be given right now. And God takes me into a vision. I'm a kid in the most beautiful lush green, lush green grass. I was doing so good speaking, excuse me. <laughs> and on my right is this huge white mansion, the most beautiful house that you've ever seen. And we're surrounded by this uh, prairie farm gate. You know, the two slats with, you know, that about waist high, meant to keep cattle and stuff out. And I'm sitting there. I'm a little boy. I'm playing with Tonka trucks. I'm like, I never played with Tonka trucks back in the day, but it's kind of lit. <laughs> and I look over to my left and it's my brother outside the gate that's speaking to me on the phone. Torn clothes, raggedy hair, cut up, crying, ashamed. I keep hearing the word ashamed. This word is for you if you are in here ashamed of something. If you're feeling condemned. If you're feeling not worthy. If you're feeling like you're too far gone. Get ready because God's about to ingrain this on your heart. Speak, Father. All I hear my brother say on the phone while I'm looking at him over at the fence is, I just want my family back. The next thing I feel is God, the father, walk out of the house. Touch my shoulder, whisper in my ear, what do you think I want? What do you think I want? He just wants you back. He created you to be a part of his family. He created you to love you. He delights in everything that you do. No matter how wild you might think you're being. God says, that's my boy. That's my girl. God delights in you and he just wants you to come home. God said people got baptized by water in here, but I'm getting ready to baptize somebody by fire. Everybody do me a favor if you can. Stand up, please. Everybody just pay respect to your brother and sister and your father. Most importantly, bow your heads, close your eyes. Jesus Christ loves you. I stand before you a broken man. 
I was ashamed. I felt condemned. I felt unworthy. I've done everything that you probably think you would never, ever do. I've done it. And God met me in a pit and God is ready to meet you right now. I urge you, don't miss this. You are special in the kingdom of God. You are so special. If you believe that and you are ready to accept Jesus Christ, raise your hand for me. Yes, brothers, I see you. Brother, I see you. Sister, I see you. God sees you. Don't be ashamed. This is you and the Father. The Father is ready to douse you in a robe. He is ready to douse you in the finest jewels that he has had saved for you. Your taste, your colors, your stones, the things you like. The robe perfectly fits. This is your moment with the Father. Yes, sister, I see you. Do me a favor, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, King Jesus, Holy Spirit, I thank you for this moment and everything that has led up to it. I know you love me and I want to love you the way that you love me. Allow me to put my burdens down. Give them to you and accept your freedom. Accept your gift of love and take my place in your kingdom. Thank you, Jesus, for taking it for me when I deserved it all. In Jesus' name, amen.